Perfect. All right. Uh, so, uh, just, we normally just start at a table, work our way around. Just follow that flow. Wanna... Have you ever had a baby born in Boston or Austin or anywhere else that you've been? Uh... You know, I can't. Uh, you know, I. In Austin, we had something. I can't remember. I have to. I'm going to do some research on yeah. that. I think there was something that happened on a bus, but not. And then I think the ambulance met the bus. And I think it was, if I recall, it was yeah, something like that. But not that. like that was. Uh, I'm really proud of the team. Like they, they stepped up and took care of business, and uh, you know that's a life experience for them on one side and the mom and the baby on the other. So uh, it's good to see some feel good stuff happen in this world every day. You know, sometimes we concentrate on the negative, but there's a lot of good in this world. That's what you got today? Okay, we'll just keep going. Yeah. How do you do? Yeah, um, I have a quick question about the bus uh, freight boxes and uh, the bus that you have to go to Okay. okay. Is there a more specific timeline for when it's going to happen? Uh, should we expect that this is slow? Or what's your... uh, I think you should expect some information in the upcoming, uh, you know, upcoming weeks related to uh, the first location that we want to go into outdoor boarding. Um, and because right now it's just about getting enough of the, f so we don't need the whole fleet obviously uh, installed with all of our readers. We just need X amount of fleet that will be able to handle front and back door readers. Once we have those, and then we need them at one garage to then put them into one line to operate or maybe a couple lines to operate. So the team is just wrapping up some plans like that. And then there's a little bit of small training just to make sure the team is all aligned. Uh, but I think uh, in the not too distant future, we're going to announce uh, our first location for uh, outdoor boarding and then kind of, you know, we, we want to monitor it and see how it's all working and then we can kind of, you know, expand from there. So you're going to say that it's going to happen this year? Oh, for sure. For sure. Can you talk a little bit more about it? Because it looks like it's happening this day one. This is something that I, before, I, before you were here, I covered class a lot. Yeah. And it's been talked about, but this is the last day that it's yeah. yeah, listen, there's a lot of systems around the country that have some places do it a lot, some places do it a little, some places have done it and taken it away. So part of this rollout, we have to make sure it works well to expand it. So, you know, one of the things we have to, we have to have people pay a fare. Uh, all door boarding can 10 times make fare evasion worse. So that's one of the things we're watching. We also want to make sure our operators are safe. Uh, and this may actually help create a, even a safer environment because there's more people going in other, and, and then you get one less choke point for kind of just, you know, it can be stressful on a busy day, right? Uh, we want to make sure people with disabilities uh, or people with kids in a stroller or those types of things, is it better or, or not? We think it will be better, just like I think you saw some public comment about that. We want to monitor that. We want to make sure uh, the doors, you know, which should work totally fine, but, you know, that we don't have any door failure issues. Uh, how our signage looks and how we interact with our customers on feedback related to signage. We also want to really take advantage of where our partners are investing. So uh, things like bus lanes, that's where our logical first place would be. Um, you know, f uh, floating bus stops, things of that nature. We also don't need all door boarding at certain times of day that are not busy, right? Like uh, Georgia Ave is a very busy bus corridor, and we have other places where at 8 o'clock at night there might be only three or four people on a bus. You're not going to save any time, and if anything, you might just want everyone to come into the front on a place like that. But uh, if we can go into all door boarding and really cut down on the time, on the dwell time, at you know at a traffic light or something like that we really want to move our corridors and treat our like i'm really focused on treating our bus customers i said it with respect i want our bus customers to use the system feel that they are important feel, make our bus operators and bus staff uh, understand they are just as important as rail at this organization uh, and if we do that well ridership continues to grow and we provide more value to the to the, not only those customers, but the whole region. So, um, you know, I think I, I'm pretty proud of the team. We got a suite of stuff around bus. And I think if you look at it holistically, you know, and bus doesn't get the attention it deserves, right? The media doesn't talk about bus that much. It just, I don't know why, probably a lot of historic inequity issues around that. But I think if you look at our suite of package, uh, the suite of uh, services around bus that we are doing, we're, we're really trying to transform the bus experience here at Metro. Yeah, hi. Sorry, I just, I, what's your name? Sorry. Oh, my name's Trinity. Hey, Trinity, how you doing? Doing well. Good. 
So after we've seen people sliding through their gates, will you make adjustments to gates to prevent people from squeezing through the doors? Uh, at the Fort Totten gate, you might be referring to the space that's in between. Yeah, the next uh, round that comes out will be uh, the, the panels, that are, the next shipment of panels will make that uh, space even uh, more narrow. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's the last little, if you will, learning piece that we develop from that. And part of it is where the hinge and they attach. Uh, but, you know, the, again, I, as I said, pretty public in the board, we're never going to get to zero fare evasion. And so no matter how many people put out sensational videos on the media or social media, that's like, people could do that all day long. It's not going to change our focus. We're trying to uh, reduce fare evasion, get orderlings back to the system. Um, and unless we put up a barbed wire wall, uh, people are going to, you know, a few people are going to figure out how to get around it. Um, and that happens anywhere in the world. So we just want to have a more manageable system. And then along those lines, have you identified who among the riders who are evading fares are students and eligible for DDC's free ride program? And if not, who? Yeah, so we said uh, probably last September-ish probably that we know there's a percentage of people that are fair, fair evading from the system technology that would be people that would be in the DC uh, ride free program. Part of that issue though is we do need those taps. So I would call that tap evasion versus fair evasion per se. But we're working really close uh, with, with the district to try to get that managed a little bit better for the upcoming school year. Uh, but when we get to these larger gates, uh, no one's gonna be able, like you know, a student today, depending on their age and height, could probably walk over some of the gates. They're not going to be able to do that going forward. So we are, we are working on whole protocols of how they will have to interact with an ambassador or station manager if they don't have their card to get through. Uh, you know, so, so there's a lot of layers to that. But we, we want kids to be able to use the system and get to school. Um, and, but that's one group of people. You know, uh, school's out right now, and we still have, obviously, people fare evading. So uh, we set up a low-income fare program for people. Uh, we want people that really need that to sign up. Uh, but I think it's clear from videos there's lots of people that can afford to pay that are just not following the rules of the system, too. So hopefully we'll get that narrowed down more. We're going to get the, the school-age kids managed a little bit more, collaboratively between us and the district. And all of this is, you know, together uh, manage, managing the whole experience better. If I could ask one last question sure. about that. So if, if we're still managing to work to identify who it is, whether or not these are students, then is the $40 million in, dollars in lost revenue still an accurate estimate? Is that still an accurate estimate? I get that. We don't have a $40 million is, is a good estimate for us based on technology um, of, of, of registering how many people are fare evading. So you got to remember, not all fares are the same, right? So someone from Shady Grove to Union Station is a $6 fare that could be evaded. And someone from DuPont to Metro Center is a $2 fare that could be evaded. So we have... This is an algorithm-based, you know, rough order magnitude estimate thing. If we had it precise that we knew how many times you on a Tuesday didn't pay, we would stop you on Tuesday to pay. Um, so it's, it's, it's averages based on system data. And I think, you know, we're, and we're trying to just be kind of open and transparent that it's not supposed to be perfect. It's supposed to be ranges. And our job is to just pull that in across a variety of ways. Yeah, sure. How you doing? How you doing? <clears throat> My name is James Wright. Uh, hey, James. Washington former newspaper. Uh, I was going to ask about uh, Sergeant Belton, um, and I would like to comment on that. But also, uh, I've been hearing buzz in Georgetown about the proposal of the new uh, blue line that's being proposed. Okay. I'm sure you heard that in history, uh, Metro approached Georgetown by setting up a station there about 60 or 70 years ago, and they said no because they didn't want any, any outsiders. Are you hearing anything like that in terms of possibly setting up a station in Georgetown? Yeah, well, one, I can't speak if that happened or not. There's there's urban legend that happened, but I've yet to see anything actually in writing or evidence of that true being true. So it is what it is, is the best saying. Whatever happened six years ago happened six years ago. Uh, I've seen no opposition to someone of anything. I, all I see is people wanting more metro and more places, uh, which is usually how uh, transit works around the world. People see great metro and they and they want it. Uh, but again, I don't want to put the cart before the horse kind of uh, statement here because that, that's just one of the options that may, may exist. We have a, a whole planning option. We're in that second phase of the community engagement part right now. We're going to collect all that information and then we'll, uh, in, the, in, the, 
in the proper sequence, bring it to the board and try to try to get the board to make a decision on long-term investments. And then we got to figure out with our partners how to then fund those investments, let alone then do the design, the construction, you know, and the commissioning. So uh, let's say, hope it doesn't take 60 years for whatever we decide to do. But uh, I, I've yet to see opposition of anything. Most all the stuff I've seen is people want, why don't you do three of these lines instead of one? And why don't you do this? It's, you know, people want more stuff, uh, not less. In terms of the Sergeant Bell's yeah, in terms what, of uh, uh, her uh, becoming the range master, uh, what are your thoughts about uh, her being the range master and diversity in uh, Metro? Yeah, I think she's a great symbol of what's great about Metro, right? And uh, we have 12,000 team members uh, committed, work really hard. Uh, I've interacted with her several times because uh, I do a lot of the police graduations, and interacting sometimes with the training team. Um, high quality professional person believes in this organization and is one of those servant leaders you know believes heavily in uh, being a law enforcement officer for the right reasons so I, I think we're lucky to have her and I'm really pr proud and I think it's really nice that the board was able to recognize her today yeah thank you anything else I'm going out to look at the bus yeah we good I right. do have just one more okay story. you just celebrated Oh, uh, well, the, 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 the hardest one thing that obviously happened, do you mean personally, organizationally? Uh, both. Yeah, well, maybe the same thing, actually. Like, you know, unfortunately, the, the, the murder of one of our colleagues, Mr. Cunningham, uh, was, was pretty traumatic to this organization, uh, was certainly uh, devastating for his family, for his friends, um, you know, uh, challenging as the general manager, the board, you name it. So, uh, yeah, that was a, a serious, really uh, devastating time to go through. I will say I'm also, you know, there was this amazing moment about that, too, which is how much I think the family in this organization appreciated how the region came together to support Metro. And it showed how valuable people think Metro is to them every day, uh, whether it's flowers at the booth or how, I mean, our partners shut down the Beltway for a funeral procession. Uh, our, you know, the Congressional Cemetery uh, donated a plot to the family uh, because it's their, it, it was close to them, and that's where the employees use that station. So I think it, it mattered in the sense of, uh, you know, I, I think it brought home this message of a community. And I think people, people see Metro more than just buses and trains. It's, it's part of what we are. It's part of the DNA of the region, and I think so I think they honored Mr. Cunningham and his family uh, really well. And uh, I've, I will always appreciate what the region did for, for, for his family.